Hard work is the key to success. Be it your studies, your career or any work of your life. And I know all the students will be working very hard as annual examination is approaching very soon. You might be working very hard to score good marks in your examinations. So here I am with a video to ease your problem and your uh, and to get good scores in your examinations. So hey my viewers, welcome to my channel Scorpio class. So in this video, we are going to discuss very important questions of class eight social science of chapter sources. So from now onwards, we'll be getting chapter wise videos, which will have important questions, which will help you all to prepare for your annual examinations. So these are the questions apart from your textual questions, which you have in your chapter. This is the, these are the questions which are taken from every corner of your chapter, from your lesson, from your textbook. So this is going to be very helpful for you all as most of the questions can be asked in your examinations. So let's get started. But before that, if you're new to my channel and watching my video for the first time, do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you get the notification of all the important upcoming videos. And my dear students, if you also want the textual answers of this chapter, uh, the video is already uploaded in my channel and the link will also be shared in the i button above. So let's get started. Be very attentive and careful because this is going to be very helpful for you all. Do not skip any part of it. So here we have two categories, short answer type questions and long answer type questions. So let us see first all the short answer type questions from this chapter sources, and then we'll go to the long answers. So first question here is, what is history? Answer, history is a systematic study of the past. Next, what are sources? Answer, the basic materials necessary for the construction of history are called sources. Sources provide information about the period they belong to. They provide support to history. Writing of history is not possible without sources. So let's move to next question. Which are the two groups into which the primary sources can be classified? Answer, the two groups into which primary sources can be classified are literary sources and archeological sources. Next question, which are the two types of literary sources? Answer, the two types of literary sources are written literature, and oral literature. Next question. Which are the two types of literary sources? Answer, the two types of written literary sources are native literature and foreign literature. Next question. Who wrote Indica? Answer, Indica was written by Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador at the court of Chandragupta Maurya. Okay, the Indica is the name of the book. It was written by Megasthenes, the Greek ambassador at the court of Chandragupta Maurya. Next, what is oral literature? Answer, oral literature refers to the folk stories, folk songs, folk legends, ballads, and experiences passed on from generation to generation by word of mouth. Okay, uh, the stories, the poems which are orally passed on from generations to generations is known as oral literature. Next question. Which is the source that is more reliable for the writing of history? Answer. Inscriptions are more reliable sources for the writing of history. Next, what do you mean by inscriptions? Answer, inscriptions are the writings engraved on rocks, 
stones, metals, terracotta and other materials. Next, what is meant by numismatics? Answer, numismatics is the study of coins. Okay, the study of coins is also known as numismatics. Next, by what method can the age of biological fossils be decided? Answer, the age of biological fossils can be decided by applying carbon-14 dating method. Next question. Whose inscriptions are the earliest inscriptions found in India? Answer. The inscriptions of Ashoka are the earliest inscriptions found in India. Okay. So, these were the short answer type questions. Now, let us move to long answer type questions from this chapter. So, let's start. Question 1. What is meant by native literary sources? Name any two native literary works. Answer. Literature produced by Indians in their native language is called native literature. And sources comprising such as literature are called native literary sources. Vishaka Dutta's Murtu Rakshasa, Kalhana's Raja Tarangini, Bana Bhatta's Harsha Charita, Kautilya's Artha Shastra, Chand Bardai's Prithviraja Raso, Pampa's Vikramarjuna Vijaya are some of the native literary sources. Okay, so name of the writer and their books is mentioned here. Native writers and the native books. Moving to next question. What is meant by foreign literary sources? Give examples. Answer, the writings of foreign travelers, explorers and scholars constitute foreign literature and such writings are called foreign literary sources. Megasthenes' Indica, Hyun Sang's Si Yuki, Fahin's Go Koki, Cholmi's Geography, Farishta's Tariqe Farishta, Babur's Tuzuke Babri are examples of foreign literary sources. So these are the names of the foreign writers and their works. Okay, let's move to the next one. How are inscriptions useful in constructing history? Answer, inscriptions are reliable sources as they have a direct relationship with events. They are useful in constructing history because they provide authentic information about the administration as well as political, social, cultural, economic, educational, religious and other aspects of the period. Next question. What are the uses of the study of coins? Answer. Coins are helpful in knowing the geographical extent of the empire that minted the coins. Language of administration, titles of kings, etc. Religious and economic conditions and the metal technology in vogue during that time. Trade links between India and other countries. So these are the informations you get with the help of study of coins. So these are the uses of the study of coins. Okay, moving to next question. What are monuments? Give examples. Answer, a monument is a large structure usually made of stone erected in memory of a person, event, etc. Such as a building, pillar or statue. In every period of history, human achievements have included material objects too. Stupas, basadis, temples, 
palaces, forts, etc. are the kinds of monuments that exist today. Mahrole's Iron Pillar, Vijayapura's Gold Gumbas, Chittor's Vijaya Stamba, paintings of Ajanta and Elora Caves, Elephanta Caves, Aihole and Patadakalu sculptures are examples of monuments. Next, moving to next question. In what way do monuments throw light on history? Or other form where you, uh, you can be asked the same question is, what are the aspects on which monuments throw light? So if either of the questions is asked, you have to write the same answer, okay? It can be twisted and can asked in any form. So answer is, monuments throw light on the civilization, culture, technology, social and economic conditions, and religious aspects of the period. They reflect the achievements of kings and administrators. They thus enable us to know the history of the period. Okay, so these are the this is the answer for the monuments that throw light on history or the aspects on which monument throw light. So next, moving to next one. Explain the sources of history. Answer: The primary sources of history can be classified into two groups. They are literary sources and archaeological sources as we have already seen right so now literary sources are of two types written literature and oral literature under liter written literature we have two types native literature or foreign literature next moving to archaeological sources that's the second point now, native literature is the literature produced by Indians in their native language. The writings of foreign travelers, explorers, and scholars constitute foreign literature. Oral literature refers to the folk stories, folk songs, folk legends, ballads, and experiences passed on from generation to generation by word of mouth. Next, coming to archaeological sources. Archaeological sources are the inscriptions, coins, monuments, pots and pans, tools and other artifacts that have been obtained during archaeological excavations. Okay, so this we have seen the entire sources of history and the definition of it is also given here. So I hope this is very clear to you all. You can pause the video and go through it thoroughly. Moving to next question. Name some important inscriptions. Answer. Samudra Gupta's Allahabad Pillar inscription. Imadi Pulakeshi's Aihole inscription. Karavale's Hatti Gumba inscription. The Uttara Merur inscription of the Cholas are some of the important inscriptions. Okay, so these were some of the short and long answer type questions from this chapter, which are very important. I hope this will help you all to prepare for your examination from this first chapter. If the video was helpful and if you liked it, do hit the like button and share it with your friends. And stay tuned for more such important videos. We'll be back till then. Take care and stay safe. Thank you.